you know, just a casual everyday makeup look for the sewing room. I'm not even going anywhere, not leaving the house. So, you know, I just wanted to do something really light and natural. Um, that's how I ended up with this look, of course. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, hello, welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room and to my summer sewing series here on the channel. Of course, last time we made that 1950s dress and this time it was the last project I had allocated um, time for basically in the schedule was a your choice project and it seemed pretty clear to me what people really wanted me to make. A lot of people wanted me to make shorts or 1940s trousers which we'll see about fall maybe there. Um, different little suggestions people were asking for but mainly it seemed like and it seems like on many of my videos people want to know how I make my little cotton twill summer suits little dress sets or um, sometimes you can see these um, people are making a lot of noise in this house see these referred to as two-piece dresses in the 1940s catalogs and things like that but I call them little summer suits I think anytime you have like a stiffer weight jacket and skirt it's a suit but anyway many people have asked me about how I make these or what the pattern I use for them is and of course I draft my own patterns so the only way for me to show you what pattern I use for these suits is to make another one for you here and walk you through my process of how I would make the pattern for one of these, how I would go about making one of these little twill summer suits. So that is what I'm going to be doing here for my last summer sewing series project of the year. Of course, there will probably be a fall winter sewing series coming up. No, no worries. It's not like I'm going to stop sewing here on the channel. Not when you guys see, do seem to be enjoying it. So, uh, but today we have this finale of the summer series with this twill suit. So let's jump on in and I'll show you how I make one of these suits. <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, squeaky noises from my mom's office chair upstairs. Uh, my office is down here and my mom actually has, she works from home and she has an office right above mine and the floor keeps squeaking. So I'm not sure if the microphone's picking that up, but if it is, you know, I'm sorry. I just, I don't live alone. So I can only control so many sounds to not happen while I'm recording. And right now the air conditioner is off. So we have at least that on our side. All right, everyone, here we are at the blue table of doom as usual. And no, I still haven't done a nice clean of this. Um, many crafts and things have been made on this table. But today I'm going to be making one of my little twill, cotton twill suits, summertime suits that I make. The skirt, of course, I will be talking about later. Uh, I'm probably just gonna make a pencil skirt for this. If I have enough fabric, because the twill I got is quite wide, I might make a pencil skirt and an A-line skirt to wear with this jacket interchangeably, but we'll see what happens when it gets time to uh, see how much fabric I have left. But I will be focusing on the jacket mostly here at the start of this video because of course this pattern looks quite different from anything else I have drafted for you here on the channel before. Um, one of the main differences being that there are no darts in this jacket, are there? We usually are doing dart manipulation here on the on the channel, but I'm going to be taking those darts and turning them into a princess seam line. That's what this is called. You will often see an armhole princess, which is when this line, instead of coming up into the shoulder, comes into the armhole here, but that's just an armhole princess. This is a princess, or I don't know if it's called a shoulder seamed princess seam, or if it's just what a classic pencil, classic pencil, classic princess seam is um, called or is whatever. But basically in order to do a princess seamed um, jacket, I will need to start with a princess seamed bodice pattern. So I will be taking my standard bodice block front and back here, tracing those, turning them into princess seamed two piece front and two piece back. So it'll, instead of being one piece for the front and one piece for the back with darts, it'll be two pieces for the front and two pieces for the back. And there will be no darts to sew, but we will have those princess seams to sew along. So the first thing we have to do is get these seams in here instead of darts. Um, basically, you know, normally the pattern looks like this and we're going to put a seam down the center and that is where the fullness will be controlled instead of in darts. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and trace a copy of each my front and back and we will start with the front of course. Okay so what I have done here is I've just traced the front bodice pattern and then I have drawn in the darts. Um, I just went ahead and marked in the center of my shoulder seam here between the neck and the um, shoulder point I guess this is what this is called. I just put a little mark in the center there that's where my princess seam is going to begin and then of course it's going to come down through the apex and using these two darts we will still create the shape that we want for the bodice, even though we are turning this into a princess seam. So I have uh, drawn my darts in and then I've just gone through the center of those darts to find the apex again. Remember this is just like the center, like bust point basically that where everything radiates out from when you're doing pattern drafting for the front here. Just because, you know, ladies got curves, you gotta work around them. Um, well, not, not just ladies, people have curves. Um, then 
I am taking from one dart point and connecting that into the apex here. So this is where the dart ends if you were to sew it. But when we're doing pattern manipulation, we extend the darts all the way to the apex. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take from the dart point to the apex and then do the same with this side as well. Now I'm going to be taking a, uh, drawing a line from here down to the apex as well. Now I don't have this process memorized because I don't actually do princess seams very often. Um, I don't have a princess seam base block even that, I mean, it'd be nice to have one cut out of card and just kept on hand for doing any princess themed garments, but I just don't make them very often other than these little jackets, I suppose, but I haven't made one of these even in a couple of years. So uh, we'll see how I do, but I do have my pattern drafting book open for reference here. So this is the method that is in this book, Pattern Making for Fashion Design by Helen Joseph Armstrong. This is the book that I used in uh, fashion school in college. Both of the, I'm not sure actually if Colorado State University uses this book, but Woodbury University, which is where I did my freshman year of design school um, in Burbank, California, they gave us this book as our textbook. And so I've been using it ever since then back in 20, 2009 when I got this. Um, so this is the, you know, system I'm showing you today. I feel a little bit like I'm plagiarizing, but you know, I'm just walking you through. People do recipes all the time. This is a recipe for a pattern, right? Um, <clears throat> anyway, so I've marked from that midpoint up here down to my apex. And then as Helen Joseph Armstrong instructs us, I have marked up two inches and then uh, up from the apex and then two inches down from the apex along this line here. And then three quarters of an inch in on this dart as well. I don't uh, really know why, because the book says so. Um, that usually is good enough for me. I trust these people to know what they're talking about. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut this out and then slash all the lines I need to slash. And then I will show you and talk about that. All right, so here's our pattern piece again, just along that long line, you know, the line that went up to the apex and then all the way up to the shoulder here. Separate that piece out. This is gonna be your center front piece of your front bodice here. And then this guy, the side front, now it is the side front. Um, we have a few things to do here. So over here, we came in that three quarters of an inch and now they kind of skipped this step, but you want to redraw that line down to that point instead, instead of all the way to the apex. Now we're going to be using this as the pivot point for where we are going to get rid of this side dart. Um, the way we are going to get rid of this side dart and still have the amount of fullness we need in the bust is that you cut in from this side, slash that guy to the point, the new little pivot point and we go slash in from the side dart into that new pivot point too. So normally we're pivoting from the apex, but now we're coming in this three quarters of an inch. Again, I don't know why, because they say so. And you know, when the fashion gods say something, you just you just believe them. So now that we have that, I have that cut all the way to that point so I can pivot this. As usual, I'm just going to close my dart here. So I will go ahead and I will tape this shut and then cut off the excess that sticks out into the armhole and stuff like that. All right, so I just have that side dart taped closed now, which opened this little bit of fullness here. And then we have this other dart to contend with. Now, because you're gonna be sewing this here along to where you cut the front piece here, basically you can just remove this dart and it will be created by the seam lines or the style lines of the new bodice pattern. Um, so this will be sewn, you know, along here and this will be sewn along there. So that's what creates the cone for the bust, of course. Um, so what I'm gonna do here on this side front piece is I'm just gonna go ahead and slice this dart right off of there. It's gonna move this center front part of the bodice up here out of our way for now. So I just go, went ahead and cut that dart off of there. Oop, goodbye. Um, so I'm gonna put some extra paper on here and then I will show you what we're gonna do to curve the bust over here and kind of finesse that area. It may, this is one of those patterns where because you're doing so much change to the bodice, although you know that the two dart version fits you, I would definitely cut out a muslin of your new one and make any changes you need to to your princess bodice pattern first before you even try and make like one of the little jackets that we're making or make a dress or anything out of this pattern. This is one of those things where it's a big enough modification that I definitely think you need to make a mock-up or a muslin with your new bodice pattern once you're done, but I'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and tape on some extra extra paper here. All right, so we imagine this is where our dart was down here. And up here at the bust, they recommend the book, you know, the authority here, recommend coming out 1 16th of an inch along this top above the bust. I don't really exactly know why, but once again, if that's what they say to do, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then you're just gonna, it just says, let me see, 
shape bust curve. So, you know, so much guidance going on there. So we're just gonna go ahead and draw a, a curve in this edge here using that, just coming down um, a tiny, tiny bit to encompass this 16th of an inch and then just curve this area here. It actually recommends coming in a little bit along here if you want something to be like super fitted under the bust. Um, I don't really want to do that with mine just because I don't really want uh, this to be like a skin tight, like second skin princess. But if that's something that you're interested in for a princess seam dress or something like that, um, or having your princess seam be quite fitted, you can curve down from here and then come in like a 16th of an inch down on this side to like scoop out this area a little bit. Um, as you can see in the drawing here, they come in like one eighth of an inch and it's scooped out um, there to really follow the line of the body. But I don't necessarily like things to look that fitted for me. Um, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna keep this a straight line here and then I will curve this bust area over up into here. I'll draw that line. So as the book suggested, I have uh, shaped the bust curve and it just says blend. So I've just kind of blended this area into a smooth curve. Now you may need to take this to be less curved. You may need it to be more curved. These are the things you're gonna find out once you have completed this pattern, cut out a muslin and tried it on and see what it's doing at the bust. And you will see if you need to make any changes to this bust point area. But I've just blended it, curved it as the book suggests. Uh, so, so loosely suggests to me to do. <laughs> I just basically blended that in there using that extra 16th of an inch that it asked me to include and then so I will just go ahead and uh, I taped all in this extra just so you could see where the dart was. But I'm just going to go ahead and remove this and then just cut this little piece and then I will have my side front done. So here I have my side front and my center front of my new princess seamed bodice pattern. As you can see, essentially what we have here is this is where that dart was. This dart's been closed and it's almost just been like opened up into the shoulder is kind of how this is. Like you could do two darts, like if you moved this up into here as a dart, it wouldn't look that different from this. It's just basically doing, separating the pattern completely. Instead of sewing those in as darts, you're just taking out that fullness by having it being removed from the pattern entirely. So this will be sewn, you know, along here, and this will be sewn along there, and that will create the cone-ish shape needed for the bust. Um, now, the reason that we drew these little lines in is you can see like that is supposed to match up here at this little line, and this is supposed to match up here. Now, I never really, use um which you can see that line got lost here so i'll have to find it <laughs> i'll have to find it again on this mark that's why you maybe should draw those lines longer than i did i suppose i would go ahead and take the piece that i cut off of here here it is Choo. um and then find where that line was right here looks like so go ahead and move that line onto over here so i just know where these pieces are supposed to match up when they're being sewn later i don't normally use notches or marks like that because i'm everyone i always say it on this channel lazy but when it comes to princess seams i change my tune even i need notches and marks when it comes to things like that so i will go ahead and put that line back onto this piece since i accidentally cut it away here and then i will have those lines that will become points that i'll need to match up later when i'm sewing this but that is basically the princess front bodice and then i will show you how i do the back as well all right so for the back i've gone ahead and traced that and marked the dart as well just like I did for the front. Of course, you do want to mark the actual center back on here as well, because I have an extension on my card version for, because I'm usually doing a center back zipper and things, I just have three fourths of an inch on my pattern, my like block pattern. But of course for this, eventually I will be not having a seam in the back because it'll be a jacket eventually. So I need to know where the actual center back is for this pattern. So I have that marked on here as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and mark up here on the shoulder line again in the midpoint because I do want those seams to match up on the front and the back. So I wanna put that in the exact same spot and I will draw a line down from there to this point here at the dart. And then I will cut out this piece as well. A quick note here just to say that on the center back, I thought my neckline was a little bit low on my bodice block for whatever reason. I don't know what that's about. Maybe I'll have to, probably have to correct that on my card version, but I just came up like another three quarters of an inch on the center back line here and just smoothed that in um, because I don't want this to dip down in the back at all when it becomes a jacket later. So I am already thinking about using this princess seamed pattern to make a jacket pattern. So technically I could leave this modification off of this block princess version, but uh, just something, if I forget to mention it later, I did raise the back neck a little bit because I obviously want it to lie differently than I would Maybe on a dress, doesn't matter if it's nice rounded in the back, but 
I kind of want it to be higher up on my neck for a jacket. So I did go ahead and cut this back piece out. I did just cut it along the center back. So there's no seam allowance inherent in this pattern in the center back right now. It just is cut along the center back. So I could cut this on the fold if I wanted to along this edge. But I did go ahead and separate that curve from the neck or a shoulder point down to this dart. And then of course I will slice this dart off again and then just smooth this area into a little bit of a curve. Again, you should probably add marks so that you can line this up again, but it is since it's just since it is less of a dramatic curve like the front is, I don't worry about it as much. I expect it will line up quite well while I'm sewing this seam. Um, things aren't going to get as wonky here in the back because there's just less fullness to mess with. Um, so of course this will be sewn along this edge and this is the back pattern here. Now this curve can give you some weirdness in the back. Um, so sometimes I end up making this even more subtle, like cutting a little bit of ease out of there as well too. Um, but we'll see once I have the muslin made of this, if I need to make, do any modifications to this, but basically it's just going to have this seam along the back as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add seam allowance to these pattern pieces because on your, anytime you cut into the bodice like this, if you were to cut a yoke in, uh, whatever you're doing when you're cutting inside like this, of course, this line, or even where a dart was before, now when this edge gets sewn to this edge, it's going to need seam allowance to, in order to do that. Otherwise you're shrinking your pattern by an inch on each side. So you're gonna to wanna to add seam allowance to the cut edges. So these style lines, one here, and then the princess seam along the front of the uh, front pattern as well. And then same for the front as well. I'm gonna to wanna to add seam allowance to this edge and seam allowance to this edge because when they get sewn together, you're going to need seam allowance, of course. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add seam allowance to the, each of these. I actually have, I'm actually just gonna switch over to the exact same pattern. It's just, I've already added seam allowance to this one. I made this one earlier this week. Here's one I made earlier, like a cooking program. I'm just gonna, here's one I've already prepped. Um, so I will be using this princess seamed bodice pattern to draft our princess seamed little jacket pattern. However, before that, again, I'm recommending you take this princess seam bodice pattern you just constructed out of your bodice block or your dress pattern or whatever you used to make this, and you're gonna wanna make a mock-up of this and make sure it works, um, especially because of this super, I mean, the back should be fine, <laughs> but because of this area here, if you're not used to sewing princess seams as well, as you can see that's where I've added that seam allowance in here, all this like bust area you're sewing a very curved piece to a very straight piece. So, you know, this edge gets sewn to this one and in doing so is closing all that fullness away to create the cone-like shape that we need here. Um, but if you're not used to sewing something like this, if you're not used to drafting something like this, make a mock-up, you know, better to find out something's wrong now than later when you've already cut into your nice fabric, things like that. So take some scrap fabric, take some muslin if you have it and cut this out and sew it together. Now, as you can see here, I'll just note because um, I feel the need to. Uh, I've added seam allowance to this edge and to this edge, but I haven't added it anywhere else because this is drafted from my block that already has seam allowance involved. So I only need to ever add seam allowance to my block pattern if I cut into it. So if I cut into the pattern itself, into the meat of the pattern, then I need to add seam allowance, but to the edges and everything, they already have seam allowance inherently in there. So that's the only, that's the reason that the inside where I've added that style line, that princess seam has seam allowance, but the rest does not. So I will show you what uh, I used this to make, again, one I prepared earlier, a draft version of this princess bodice. I cut this, this is the back and this is the front. I cut this out, I sewed it all together to see how this was doing. And then I tried it on and saw how it fit me and saw if I wanted to make any changes. Again, we still have the starring dead plant here in the back of the corner. This is a dress form that is just a um, display form that I actually got to model some things for uh, my future Etsy shop here. But today she's gonna be modeling this little mock-up bodice. So you can see what this seam, that I was just talking about the seam allowance over there, looks like when sewn together. Now, of course, this is a major curve, so you are gonna need to clip the inside of that, and I'll show you that in a second. What I did in order to try this little baby on is, as I was saying in the back, that I had removed the seam allowance from the pattern so that it would be able to be cut on a fold. So I cut the center back panel on a fold so that it's all one piece. And then I have our back seams uh, that we just, cause it's now a two piece princess seamed back bodice. 
Um, so that's what that is going on there. Um, and so I cut it with the back on the fold fitted and then I cut an overlap in the front. So on the front of my pattern at the center front, I added an inch on. That way I would just have a little bit of stuff to play with when trying this on almost like a little vest. Oops, sorry, I'm kicking a tripod. Um, trying this on like a little vest to get a feel for how it fits. Now you might notice on this pattern and all of my sewing and all my patterns really, that I leave the bust quite pointy. Um, this is something I don't mind because usually I'm wearing a retro or vintage style bra underneath and I have a pointier bust overall, not like a straight up bullet cone bra Madonna situation, but I do like a pointier bust. It's not something I'm trying to avoid in my sewing, whereas often that is the case for modern sewing. You're trying to create a really smooth line. For me, having it be a bit pointier and conical is actually a good thing. It creates more of a retro silhouette, so it's not something I try and fix for, um, you'll notice in my sewing. Look at all that mess to be thrown away. But looking at it here from the side, again, that's how that seam looks once it's sewn together. You are looking here to make sure that this isn't like doing any weird curves. Of course, this bust, um, this dress form does not have a double D, so again, it doesn't fit her as well as it does me. But when you have it tried on, try it on with the bra that you plan on wearing the garment with as well, so you can get a good feel for how it's going to fit you and how you want it to fit you. If this is too pointy, there are fixes for that. I will try and include links in the description for fitting a princess seam because it's not something I have to do, I've had to do much myself, um, and this one fit me fine, so I don't really have any fixes to show you. But if you are having trouble getting your princess seam to lie nicely over the bust, I will try and include some links in the description of this video for troubleshooting that area. Um, and look at all the mess that you don't see behind the camera. Oh my, oh my goodness. But in general, this is the muslin of the pattern that we just drafted from the basic bodice block. This hypothetically should fit you just as well as your basic bodice block does. That's why we use that fitted pattern, that block pattern that we know fits to draft everything else because then we know unless something disastrous happens, it will fit. But with something this much change going on, I always like to make a muslin. This is made out of a thicker cotton twill, which is not ideal muslin fabric, but it is the fabric I will be using to make these jackets. So I wanted to make sure it worked in the cotton twill. And since I had some lying around, that's what I used to make this. Um, and I will go ahead now, and we're gonna obviously add on an extension here so that this has a little bit, not like of a peplum, but more of a jacket so it doesn't end at the waist here. Um, talk about that front extension, talk about adding any ease if you want to, and make this into a jacket pattern as opposed to just a princess seamed bodice pattern, which is what this is now. You could use this to make a dress or a little vest like this if you wanted to. Um, you now have a princess seamed dress bodice in your collection. All right, so back here on the drafting table, we're gonna start making some decisions about our little jacket here. So I have my center front piece of the bodice. This table is squeaking so much. Um, so that's gonna be the center front piece of our bodice pattern we just drafted. That's what we're gonna turn into this piece. This side piece is gonna be this guy. Um, so we already have this princess line, but our pattern here only goes this far. Um, so basically we have a lot of this going on, but this only goes to the waist. So we're gonna create a little bit of an extension coming down here so that we can have the rest of the jacket basically. So obviously it kicks out here at the waist. So we're gonna do that to our pattern here, add that on. And then we obviously have the turn backs, the collar up here. This doesn't have a collar in the back at all. It just uh, is the front of this. If you imagine this piece, if you were to turn this, like you were to fold this like so, it becomes a little collar on the top. So I'll decide once I have the muslin of this actually how to do the collar. So I'm not even gonna worry about that right now. Um, but I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do to my front two princess bodice pieces to turn them into the front two jacket pieces, basically. Beginning with, of course, tracing a copy of each. So I've just traced this guy and traced that one. So now I have a new fresh copy to play with here so I can draw on this, of course, I drew them too far down, so I had to add an extension of more paper. Silly me. But now I just have those pieces traced. Now, of course, that does, because this one has, because this one has seam allowance, now, of course, my tracing already has seam allowance, so I won't have to worry about adding it. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is, of course, this jacket will close here in the front, and how much you want that to overlap um, is gonna depend on how much you're gonna wanna add here. Or if you want to do this as a fold under as opposed to having a separate facing. I'll be doing a separate facing. You can make those decisions here at the overlap. But basically for this, I'm just going to be, this is my center front 
line here, I'm just going to add on an inch and one eighth. So uh, one and one eighth of an inch. <laughs> I can talk. Uh, that's what I'm just going to add on for my little spot for the bu buttons to eventually go here. That's just what I'm going to add for now. Um, this I'm going to be making a mock-up of this jacket where I make those kind of final decisions of like what I exactly want this to be later. But for now, to be able to play around with that mock-up, I'm just going to put on one and one eighths of an inch on the front there. Now I have to decide how far down from the waist I want this to come. I'm just going to start out with five inches. And of course, again, during the mock-up phase of this, I will decide if I want it to be longer or shorter. This is one of those things where it's just a more complex pattern. So I'm going to be making a mock-up. I even have the muslin sitting right there to make to make one. Um, so in order to do that, I kind of have to decide a few things. Like here, I want this area. If you imagine this is the, uh, I'm trying to explain this. So the seam, so the seam going down the front of the bodice here on each side is our princess seam, is these two edges here. And now if I wanted to add like a little like peplumy flare or a pleat or something in here, I would add that between these two pieces. So I would make this flare out quite a lot so that when it was, so, when it was sewn together, it would like pucker out from the jacket like so. Um, I want this to be rather flat, so I'm gonna keep these rather straight. I'm just gonna have them extend just a tiny bit out, flare just a tiny bit because I don't want it to like peek out from the waist. I'll show you all this when we have the muslin. Um, I just want it to be rather flat. And then here at the side seam, however, of the whole thing, I wouldn't mind a little bit of extra flare here. So I will go ahead and kick this out quite a lot here and then just round this edge. But to start with, I'm gonna start here at the center front, measure down five inches, mark that, um, and just kind of true a line five inches out from the center front, um, 90 degrees out from that to get an idea. And I will go ahead and do, I guess I'll true down from here five inches as well. So we can get a five inch kind of block down from that as well, just to get an idea of what the under waist part of the jacket fronts will look like. So over here on the center front piece, I've just, where the waist is on our original bodice pattern, I've just true uh, the center front area down farther and marked it five inches down from the end of the waist on the bodice pattern. So this is five inches down and then I just 90 degreed out from there and we will decide how much flare to put in here. But on, on the side, I just wanted to show you, this is the side seam of my jacket pattern. So that means this point right here translates to this point right here. So if I were to come straight down, I'm sure my her my hips are in here, you know? So I'm trying to allocate for my hips because uh, I'm actually quite a hourglass shaped person. So depending on how, you know, the angle of your hip, if you're rather a more straight person, you wouldn't have to worry about having a lot of flair here. But I'm gonna go ahead and allocate for quite a lot of flair because I have quite a lot of hip um, so I'm going to come out, I don't know, maybe like 45 degrees from, like if I were to true down, this would be 45 degrees, I guess. Kind of obtuse from up here, but like smaller here. So 90 degrees would be too much. <laughs> you know, that would be like if, you're, if your jacket did that. <laughs> um, so you're just going to want to split the difference. So at 45 basically is kind of where I'm going to come down. And I'm just going to measure out five inches from there to start creating this like little peplum here on the bottom of our side front. So here at this section here, um, I think this probably is going to be too much flare. Of course, you can exaggerate this flare here and in a stiff fabric like twill, it will hold out and give you more of a nipped in waist look. If you are trying to exaggerate or make yourself look like you have more of an hourglass shape, it's good to add on a little bit of extra flare here. You can even, you can wing this up quite a lot. And if it's in a lighter weight fabric, it'll fall into folds and be like a quite a floaty peplum, which is quite nice actually. And the same here with this, if you wanted to add a lot of flare here and here, along this seam, you could create again, a pleat or a um, turn there. And that is a cute style as well. I'll try and find a picture of a jacket that has fullness added along this side, along the inside princess seam. So you can see what that would look like. Um, but for mine, I'm just going to go ahead and add this flare onto the side for now. And I'm just gonna true or like, I guess I keep saying true as if I know what that means. <laughs> I'm just gonna draw a line straight um, from waist, from this point to this point, the waist on my bodice pattern is a curve, but I just want a straight line there to help me out. So just drew a straight line along the waist and then measured five inches out from that, just to be able to curve this into five inches so that it's a five inch extension all along the waist of this side front pattern. All right. So here's our side front bodice pattern. Basically I've just added on this little extension. 
for the center of the princess seam line, I only added on a half inch of flare to that. So from the waist down to the hem of the jacket here, which this is, you know, right here on this pattern piece. I just added on a half inch. I will add on a half inch to the front as well. And then when I make the muslin, I'll decide if I want more or less flare here in the front area. Probably gonna be less if I had to guess. Um, but I don't, because I'm making a mock-up, I will, you know, finesse the design in the mock-up. I don't have to make it perfect this first time. Um, so this point obviously is super harsh. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw in a curve here. Um, and you can add a little bit of ease along your side seam here if you would like to. Um, I don't add a lot of ease to my garments. Uh, because, you know, I like them to be quite fitted, not tight, but quite fitted, to be honest. Um, so I might add in a tiny bit of ease here, and I might lower the armhole um, a quarter of an inch on, of course, the front, and then also on the back, and then I will have to allocate for that in the sleeve. But I just like to have a little bit more room in here when I'm wearing something in a thicker fabric like this will be made out of, so it's a little bit, little bit more comfortable. So I think I'll lower this a quarter of an inch, extend this, an eighth of an inch, if I'm honest. I'm just gonna put an eighth of an inch, add onto this side seam, and then curve it all the way down to this point here. Okay, so up here in the armhole, I'm actually chickening, chickening out. I'm only gonna um, lower it a, an eighth of an inch. I can't talk anymore. So I just went ahead and measured an eighth of an inch down. Then I used my French curve ruler just to ease that into my armhole. And then I did add an eighth of an inch along the side seam too, and then ease that into where I was curving along our extension here. So basically for this side front piece, I've added an eighth of an inch of ease along the side seam and that extension, of course, down here below the waist. And then I've just lowered the armhole a quarter of an inch, which or a eighth of an inch, which of course I will have to do on the back as well. Okay, so again, I just kind of eyeballed straight down, sort of parallel to the center front here, and then measured out that half an inch again. I'll just curve this a tiny bit into that. And then I will go ahead and cut out this piece and this piece for our mock-up that I will be, or I keep saying R. I will go ahead and I'll cut out this these two pieces for making my muslin version of this and then I will show you how I'm going to do the back. I do feel like I'm sort of just making these choices randomly. It may sound like I am, and I really am. Um, I'm not afraid to just go ahead, jump in there and try something and see if it works, especially when I know I'm gonna be making a muslin, which is what you should be doing with a pattern this complex or this many changes in it. Um, it's not that complex of a pattern if you've been pattern drafting a long time, but if you're new to it, then it's kind of a whole new ball game. Um, but I'm not afraid to be like, oh, let's try half an inch and see if it works. Uh, let's do like a 45 degree angle and see how that goes. Because, you know, it's just paper and like scrap fabric. I mean, I bought this muslin to use for this project, but like if you have scrap fabric in your stash, you can, you know, cut this out and try and play with it. You can even pin the paper together too and get an idea of what it's going to look like. So. I, I just don't want people to be afraid to go ahead and try things. If you want something to flare more, add more flare and see how it goes, you know? Um, pattern drafting is intuitive in some ways and it um, seems really daunting and scary, but you can just try things and give it a go, you know? It's just paper and scrap fabric. You can even buy old sheets or old fabric um, for quite cheap at the thrift store, for example, to use as uh, muslin fabric to use for mock-ups. And it is giving it still a second use, you know? Um, a lot of the, that stuff just ends up in a landfill anyway, so might as well buy some 99 cent sheets and use it for mock-ups and really perfect your pattern, you know? You don't have to be afraid to play with pattern drafting, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, it may sound like I'm choosing the, to do these things for a very particular expert reason, but really I'm just like, well, I hope this works. Oh, I hope this works. And we're gonna find out along the way together. So there are those two pieces, the center front and the side front cut out so you can get a better idea of what they look like. Um, of course, it's easier to see against that blue of the table what the heck is going on. Again, this probably is gonna be too much flare on the hip, but we'll see how it turns out if we like it. Um, again, I did make sure to mark, wow, table is loud. Um, this mark is going to line up here when I'm sewing so that these edges will meet up properly when this gets sewn to this, basically. Of course, this seam needs to meet up here and at that bust point, so. We will mark that on the muslin as well. And here is the basically the, the front jacket, or without the sleeve, I suppose it's almost a vest pattern right now. Um, so here's the front. I will go ahead and trace the two princess bodice back pieces onto some paper, and I will show you what I do with those. Okay, so here we are on the back. Again, I've just gone, gone ahead and traced my center back and side back pieces down, of course, to start with. So here's my center back 
line here is this line here. That's why I traced that pattern without any extension in the back because I just knew this was gonna be cut on the fold for this jacket. So that's my center back line. Again, from the waist, I kind of just, because the waists are usually kind of curved, I kind of just split the difference between the curve and then draw a new line to use for measuring down from. Measure down five inches, of course, again. And then back here in the back for the princess seam, the part that's gonna be sewn together to create, hmm, what am I drawing? Blah. So there's princess seams on the back as well. Um, and so for that, I want a little bit more flair in that center part, just because on the back, of course, you're dealing with a little bit more hip fullness, the bum as it were. Um, so instead of adding a half inch on the interior seam of the princess, I'm adding a full inch on each side. So that'll be two inches of extra fullness in there. We'll see again if I need to pinch any of that out in the end, but I will just go ahead and leave it there. Of course, a flare here is really cute in the back. So having an extra bit of flare there is quite nice, actually, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in one inch on each side of the princess seam, because of course this line and this line will be sewn together eventually. Um, again, I'll just curve that a little bit at the waist like I have here. Just curve those into each other a little bit there. And then for the side back, I again have added an eighth of an inch along the side seam here and brought that armhole down an eighth of an inch again here to match the front. And then to find the swing of the back here, I went ahead and I grabbed my side front piece, lined it up along the side seam and then just sketched this. As you can see, it comes off the end a tiny bit here. So I just went and traced that curve from the front to the back because of course these I need to match up. Ooh, I just got a low battery announcement. I don't know if it will affect the video. Um, but I of course need this on the front and the back to match up. So it's good to just trace it. And then I just of course curve the bottom in as well. Again, just keeping that like five inch extension. So go ahead and cut out the two back pieces as well. And then I can cut out these things in muslin so we can start getting an idea of how this is going to look. Cut out the center back and the side back pieces and I just wanted to tape them together to show you what that little bit of flare does. So if you imagine this, this is the waist and this is where your bum will be <laughs> or in the end mine will be. Um, so you can see adding that little one inch bit of flare means that when these are sewn together there's a certain amount of flare from the jacket. Um, we are flat patterning a three-dimensional thing here um, in so many ways so just to show you what that little bit of flare will do along that seam it creates this much flare out from the waist. So again, I might end up taking some of this flare out because I don't have that much. I'm curvaceous, but not that curvaceous. Um, and the same is true of these sides. So this much flare on the, both the front and the back probably will be too much at the side. But that's okay, you know? And we're figuring out as I go here. It's a bit of trial and error when I'm making this pattern um, just because I haven't made this one in a while and I forget, you know, what I did originally when I made this kind of pattern years ago. So I'm just going to figure it out anew with you guys. But here's my two back pieces I will untape that and then I will go ahead and cut out um probably yeah I'll cut out the full jacket or vest as it is <laughs> right now out of muslin sew it together and show you what that looks like on the form and show you the kind of modifications I'm going to make after trying that on basically all right so I've got all my pieces cut out in muslin now oops sorry about the shaky camera here um so here's my side fronts and actually I just left um if you notice this matches up here I just left the extra salvage and extra fabric to work with here on the center front because that is where I will be deciding where how much collar fold over I want and things like that that I'll be drawing directly onto the muslin while wearing it um, or while pinning it onto the form or whatever. So I just left me I left me some extra. I left myself some extra there, but I did go ahead and mark where the center front is on the pattern piece with Taylor's chalk. I also did mark in those bits that are supposed to line up here on the bust. I should have another one down here, but I forgot along the way and hopefully it'll all work out. Um, but you should do that second one that I showed you way in the beginning as well, if you can. All right, I said I wasn't going to talk about sewing the mock-up, but I do want to mention something. Um, of course, because there are curves here, I just want to mention that you do need to clip these curves if you want this seam to lie flat, of course. This is the um, along the bust of the center, or um, the side front and the front, basically, is what this curve is here. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip into this curve of course and then also down in the curve at the waist here just so that it will lie properly and I can um, press that seam open so we can get a good idea of what this actually looks like because of course on the real thing we will be cutting the curves or clipping the curves as you always must do in life.
Okay, so I've just taped on a little bit of extra paper here, connected that line from when I folded it over on the muslin, just so I can get a better idea. So here we have the scoop from the original circle of the line. So I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out into more of a curve here because my original idea for the collar shape was something like this. Um, and so if you imagine this is the collar, this would come down you know, quite straight here and then the loop over here. Um, I'm not sure if I will still do this collar shape because I quite liked this one. So I might follow this sh original shape of the bodice quite closely actually and see what that looks like. So I think I will just straighten out a little bit from here, round this corner, add a little bit of roundness here and then ease back into this point. So with just exaggerating the shape that the natural pattern had here, I've just rounded off the top here, added about like maybe an inch here at the front of this and curved it down here. And I will cut along this line and fold it along there so you can see what the collar will look like. Um, this pattern piece has a bit of an opposite shape. Or I mean, this drawing has a little bit of an opposite shape, the original drawing. In this drawing, to do it like this, I would draw it with the curve further down, like so. But I think I, I like this shape on me, so I think I'm gonna go with this shape here. It's another thing that I just discovered during the muslin um, phase of this which is a good reason you know, to make mock-ups along the way and decide what you like on your shape and on your figure or for this project for, you know, maybe maybe next time I'll do this collar shape, but this time I think I'm gonna go with this. So I'll go ahead and cut that out and you can get a better idea of what that's gonna look like. Okay, so here this is with that cut out. And of course it just folds along here and that will be where our, or where my collar is. Um, if you imagine, you know, again, on the other side, this is the center front. And um, along here is my actual center front line, and that's where my buttons will be. And this extension, of course, will be a half inch less once a facing is sewn onto here. But that facing will cover this whole area as well, so it'll be a half inch less of a collar out here as well. Which is part of the reason I added so much here and added so much up here, is because I quite liked this collar shape, and I will lose a half inch to seam allowance when I do this area anyway. So um, it's good to have that in mind when you're drawing your collar shape, because if you want it, this might look a little bit exaggerated, but it's actually not because we're losing a half inch along this edge once that facing is sewn in. So I'm imagining my seam allowances because I know my pattern has seam allowance already attached. Anything I draw on that is also expected to encompass the seam allowance as well. So here's my little collar shape that I've drawn on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and come down here and I'm gonna add a little bit of fullness here along the waist, probably like an inch and a half up from the waist point on either end. I'm just gonna add a slip of paper in here, add a little bit of waist here. I'm gonna do the same along the side piece as well. Just add in a quarter of an inch, add in a quarter of an inch for a full half inch here, half inch on the other side, add in an inch of waist, or an inch of waist ease onto the front just in these two seams. And then on the side here, I'm actually going to add in another little bit as well, probably three sixteenths of an inch along the side waist as well. And then of course I am gonna come in that three quarters of an inch that I pinched out on the um, muslin here. So it doesn't need to be quite as flared at the end here. So I am going to add a little bit of the waist, but then ease it into less flare down here. All right, so here on my center front panel, I've just gone ahead and taped on a bit of extra paper here. That's why I keep all these messy scraps over here to use. And then I've just added a fourth of an inch here at the very tip of the waist and then ease that up into this rest of this line and then ease the rest down to this point down here. Now you could ease it in less, um, but I like to ease it in quite well so that this line stays nice and smooth. Um, and I could use a little bit of extra fullness here too. It was about perfect, but in a muslin, of course, this is a very thin, very like, not stretchable, it's not a stretchy fabric by any means, it's a plain weave, um, cotton, so it doesn't have any stretch to it. But because it's a thinner, not super close weave, there is a little bit more movability in this than there will be in my twill. So I wanted to add just a tiny bit of ease over that center front side seam, or front panel side princess seam, whatever that would be called. Uh, I wanted to add just a little bit of ease through that again too, so I will just do that here. I will do the same to this side. It's possible that this is too much. Again, once I finesse this pattern again and play with all these little edits, I will be cutting out another muslin and trying it again. So yeah, I made this one. That's our first round one. I will edit the pattern based off what I learned from this. And then I will cut out another muslin and make sure everything is the way I want it before I cut into my actual fashion fabric because I do not want to mess up my fashion fabric. I would rather get all kinks out of the pattern during doing muslins. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this same kind of modification to this side as well. I have already done it over here, just added a little bit and eased that into the waist. Again, this part up here I thought was good, had ease um, enough ease that I liked, but down here I just did want a little bit more, so I added again, probably 3 16ths of an inch, almost a fourth, to the very side um, waist, 
and then ease that into my original curve. Again, originally this did fling out a little bit more down here and I did take that in a little bit there as well. So the thing about drafting a princess seam is that when you are opening up, when we originally did the princess bodice modification, bodice seam, the princess seam modification to our front bodice pattern, which is what this is here. I have my jacket pattern nearby, but this is the original princess bodice that we used to draft this from. Um, when we opened up this little bit here from near the bust, of course, all of this little half inch here is being added to the length of the original seam that has to be sewn into this. So technically on the front, this seam from top to bottom of the princess seam is probably about a half inch shorter than this one. So when you are sewing them together, you are usually told to ease in that extra along the bust and make sure that you have, you know, your notches that you marked originally line up. But technically there's a half inch in here that, you know, is extra. <laughs> and so you're supposed to ease that in, use the presser foot feed dogs underneath on your machine to help you out doing that. And you can, it's definitely possible, but for a perfectly smooth line here, I have heard rumor AKA I looked it up on the internet that you should probably just lengthen this piece a little bit at that mark. So what I've done here is these little crosshairs are actually left over from when I was marking the apex on my original pattern here before I did this modification. So if I center out here and here, this is where this should meet or where it met originally. Hopefully some of this makes sense to you guys. <laughs> Maybe if you watch this twice, uh, you might be able to follow because I, I, it's kind of confusing, especially because I'm jumping back to the princess pattern after we already started working on the jacket pattern. I know. Um, but like this line here, I think that's where I will cut straight across and I will separate and add, I'm gonna add a quarter of an inch into my pattern. Um, so I'm gonna mark these same markings onto my jacket pattern and then pull this at this point. I'm gonna pull it a quarter of an inch apart and just lengthen this front pattern, which sounds crazy to me, but I'm just gonna try it for this next muslin and if the next muslin looks like crap, then I will undo this. It's really easy to undo, you know, just take apart that and tape it back together. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that modification to this front piece here on my jacket pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and make the same markings over here so I know where to cut. Cut this across between my two notches at the bust, so along here, and add in a quarter of an inch and just try it and see if I like it. All right, this is my, those are the front pieces now. I'm done playing around with those for now for this round. Uh, this is my center back piece here. I am just gonna go ahead and again add a quarter of an inch here at the waist and ease that in for a little bit of extra ease. I actually did add it all along this back edge. Instead of easing it back into the original, I added it on that quarter of an inch just so a little bit more ease back here. Cause again, um, I was worried this might be too much, but I think it's just a little bit, not enough of flare over the bum here. Of course I will be doing this same quarter of an inch eased in, quarter of an inch eased into this other side back piece and then doing the same down to this flare. So that'll be an extra half inch on this side and half inch on the other side of flare over the bum here. But I do wanna take a little bit out of this back curve. Um, it kinda of has a little bit of a curve along this back. And I just do need to take a little bit out of there because it was a little bit extra on my muslin. So I'm just gonna take that out. And then again, I'll be adding that one fourth inch at the waist on the side seam, just like I did on the front and taking out that bit of extra flare, just like I did on the front. So, but my back pattern is now modified or fixed as well. So is my front pattern. So I will go ahead and I'm going to cut out another muslin using my pattern now that it's been played with a little bit and fixed from that first round. I'll cut up another mock, cut out another mock-up slash muslin and I actually will cut out my sleeve pattern for this as well. I am just going to take my normal standard bodice block sleeve pattern because I haven't modified the armhole very much at all other than adding on a quarter of an inch. Um, I haven't otherwise modified this. I want to see if this sleeve still fits in here. Um, this sleeve has a little bit of ease inherent in it, and that might just be enough ease that it still fits in there. Um, but this is just something I want to test, and then I will see if I have to make any modifications to my sleeve to have it fit in this jacket pattern. So I will cut out a sleeve as well, and then I'll make another mock-up of my little jacket here. Hopefully you can hear me. Maybe? Kind of? Um, let's reconnect for a minute here, because I was adjusting the pattern. Last I spoke to, I believe, I was still adjusting the pattern for my second muslin. I made that second made that second muslin. I'll be showing you footage of that in general, and I'll probably do a little bit of voiceover on that. So hopefully you've just seen that nonsense. Um, and then I was still not sure after that muslin. I was thinking, you know, it still fits. I mean, sorry, I'm trying to find better lighting. Here's best, All right, isn't it? Um, so, 
Wow, why is this so bad? That's much better. Yay, ring lights. My bangs today are doing some interesting things. I need a haircut. Um, so last we spoke, I believe I was cutting out my second mock-up after my first round of pattern modifications, after trying the first mock-up in muslin. Of course, when you are mocking up something that you are not making in muslin, in muslin, it's only telling you so much of the story. Um, so the second mock-up I did, I liked a lot better. There, everything was working fine. Um, it still was a little bit tight around the waist, but the thing is when I make something in a thick cotton twill, when it's tight around the waist, um, that like holds me in and kind of like is part of the shaping that is done. So I was like, is this too tight still or is it going to be just fine and like the twill will do its thing and it will fit fine when it's done in twill. And the only real way to figure out what something's going to fit like in a thicker material and in the material you're going to use is to use that material to make a mock-up. So you can use something that's of a similar weight maybe in your stash or some leftovers or fabric from the thrift store or something, something of a thicker weight other than muslin, because muslin's what you use to drape and to make mock-ups and make patterns most of the time, but it is a thin fabric. It molds to the body quite well. It get warms up, warmed up and moves around a little bit. It's not the tightest weave of all time. It's not the thickest of fabrics. So it only can tell you so much of the story, especially when doing something like a jacket like this and not lining the muslin and things like that. So. After my second muslin, I decided to make a couple more little modifications to the pattern, mostly just adding a little bit more ease at the princess seam in the front, um, where I had I had added a quarter inch to the side, but then not at the hem of that point, but I did add it in there, um, and just for a little bit more fullness there. And then I um, adjusted the sides a little bit more, but not enough, as we'll see in a second here. And then what I went ahead and did is I made a twill version of this pattern because last night I was like shoot is this just not working at all I was reaching the point where I had some delirium with this project and I was like is this just not working at all and I'm just showing everyone how to like fail um, or like how I failed to make a jacket so I wanted to go ahead and just take the pattern after that second mock-up with my modifications I had made yesterday and then go ahead and like make one for real so I happen to have the actually exact same fabric that I plan on using to make this project um, I have the black organic cotton twill from moodfabrics.com to make this project, to make the final version for this video. But I happen to have some dark navy blue of the same exact fabric from Mood from when I made a jacket similar to this one that doesn't fit perfectly. I'll put a picture of an image on the screen now. You can see this has some fit issues actually um, because it's drafted from my old sloper pattern before I fixed it a couple years ago. So this is not ideal actually. So I'm happy to have a new one in navy because I did make a mock-up in navy twill. Um, and this one I think fits much better than my old navy jackets do. So I will definitely go ahead and finish this one um, because I did it, I sewed it quickly, but I was uh, in some ways still taking my time to sew it nicely so that I could have a navy version if the pattern did end up working out. And really when I started making this, I had like very little faith and thought I was gonna have to scrap this video. And this video will be coming out late because I have had some setbacks, but in the end, I actually love the way that this mock-up fits. Um, again, the muslin may have seemed tight around the waist, but this one provides the kind of hourglass silhouette that I'm looking for um, in twill. I really actually am very happy with the fit, especially over the bust too, and over the shoulder, which is something sometimes I used to struggle with having extra fullness like here, like to be pinched out here. And my newer bodice block that I've made a couple of years ago, um, I've been using for a while now, but I still consider it my new block compared to my first one. Um, fits me so much better and so this jacket fits so much better than my other ones do so now I'm looking at the other little jackets like this in my closet and thinking like these don't fit very well at all I'm gonna have to make all new ones with my new pattern but so here is the navy blue version of this jacket my mock-up here my last mock-up before doing the real thing this is going to look extremely similar to what I'm about to make today um, in the black twill but of course I will be showing you step by step what I do to make the black twill version today but I am really happy that I have my pattern where I want it to be I was worried for some reason that I had gone off the rails but it turns out everything was just fine that's what happens when it's like late night in the sewing room you start thinking am I going crazy um you probably should just go to bed and then come back the next day or when you are clear-headed again and you'd be surprised how fine everything can be sometimes. Sometimes it's still a disaster, but I think most of the time, I'd say 75% of the time, you're just going crazy in the pattern and this project is fine. Um, so just sometimes you have to leave it and come back with the lesson there. But now that I have the navy version all done, I'm gonna go ahead 
and cut out the black twill version for all of you, but we'll talk about the pattern a tiny bit before that. All right, back over here on the patterning table. Things I want to discuss. Firstly, the sleeve pattern that I'm using with this jacket. What is different about it from my normal sleeve pattern? This is the sleeve pattern from my block. If you have a basic block pattern, if you have a sloper pattern, uh, you should have a sleeve like this. Unfortunately, I know I don't provide the how to make a basic block with sleeve, but we'll do it eventually. It's just a very invent time intensive project. So I haven't done that yet, but I'm just using my basic sleeve block. Bleh. I traced a copy of this. I made it three quarters of an inch longer, and then I split it down the middle and added in a half inch because I, of course, did lower the armhole on these, that quarter of an inch on both the side front and side back. So I needed a little bit more fullness in the sleeve as well to accommodate for that armhole being made longer or bigger, I suppose. Um, so because I lowered the armhole, I did split this just down the center and add in a little bit of ease there. Is that technically the best way to do this when it's this little ease? I think so. Uh, you know, I'm sure that there's a legit way to ease that new ease into it, Blah. but this is the way I did and it worked. So there's that. So this is my pattern for my sleeve. It's just my normal sleeve pattern with a half inch added in the middle and three quarters of an inch added to the length. And I'll show you why I have that extra length on these short sleeves. Cause I do this little cuff thing here at the hem that I will show you when we get to that step. So that is the sleeve pattern since I didn't really talk about that before. And then my pattern over here, uh, the only differences I think from the last time I showed it to you are just, you know, really finessing these angles down here at the princess seam, adding things where I needed them or taking it away where I needed it. Again, just always coming off the waist and then just kind of smoothing this a little bit in the middle. Um, as far as the, like this is the side back and side front here. So of course, this meets up here along the side seam. This did stick out here. So this was a straight line from the waist to, and then there was like a little triangle of space here. And I did go ahead and trim that off. Um, just kind of, it needed to come out a little bit here for the fullness of my hips, but I didn't want it to quite stick out as much. Um, on the Navy 12-1, it does still stick out quite a lot here, which is fine. It's nice to have flare. In fact, again, if you wanted to make it fully flare and have like a flounce here, you could, but I just wanted it to be more be a bit more fitted so I just went ahead and cut off those little triangles that came from going straight down from the waist I just go ahead went ahead and trimmed those down another half inch after trying on the twill version and being able to pinch out a little bit more of the side here I just went ahead and took it off of my pattern as well so those are my side pieces then I have my princess jacket back this is the center back piece here and all I did here was I actually did just add a little bit down so that the jacket dipped down a little bit further and rounded it a little bit more around the back. So I kept this the same because of course it needs to match up, you know, with our friend, its friend beside um, the other princess bodice piece for the back. But then I did just dip down probably an inch here at the center back, um, making sure that I kept this at the very edge 90 degrees so that I don't have to worry about doing anything funky with it when I'm cutting it out. But um, I just added that so that the back of the jacket would be a little bit more curved. And then here in the front, I guess this is where I made the most changes. I did end up keeping, I remember, I feel like I talked about this, um, just because this line on the front side piece where this dart was closed, it did open up about a half inch, adding a half inch to the seam length. So I went ahead and added a quarter of an inch to this piece, because normally you're told to just ease all that ease in, ease all that ease in, well, seriously, to coax all that ease into this length, which even though this seam edge is longer than this one, it will, coax into it, but I had seen that for the smoothest possible line, just add um, that fullness into this piece too. So I went ahead and added that quarter inch and I liked the way that came out. So I will be keeping that. The other thing I did was I just folded, as you can see, this is just, this is how my pattern was. I just folded this up for that little um, shape on the front of the jacket because it, uh, you know, if I had it coming down straight, that's and smooth, it would be rounded in front, but I just wanted those little notches in front, like it's cute mostly <laughs> so I went ahead and just um, lower than the waist because I will have a button at the very waist point which helps keep the like silhouette that I like so lower than the waist because that's where a button and buttonhole will go but just lower than that I just went ahead and folded a part of it up again keeping a little bit of space here at the princess seam so that I don't have to worry about anything with that but I just folded up this bit and kind of chose randomly an angle that I I liked to create this little effect here and then for the like edge here that hangs over like again if you imagine on this 
drawing on any time you have a buttoned thing, there still is a center front, you know, line here. Boop. That is where like the buttons hypothetically should line up in the buttonholes along your center front. And then you have this certain amount of overlap here. Um, so on my pattern, this is my center front line here. I had added one and one eighth of an inch of overlap. And in fact, I liked that one and one eighth of inch of overlap. And so in order to keep it after sewing, I needed to add half inch seam allowance. If I wanted it to finish along this line, I needed seam allowance after that. So I added a half inch seam allowance to the front of my jacket here before I folded this. So half inch all along the front so that it would finish along that one one um, eighth. And even I liked the shape of the collar so much that I didn't want half inch of it to go away. So I added that half inch along and then just rounded that up into my original neck line here um, so that this still will match up at the shoulder seam with my back piece here. Um, because this is my front, of course. And so I'm quite happy with the shape of everything for the fronts and backs of my princess seamed little jacket pattern. And then of course, in order to finish all these edges somehow, the way I normally do this on these little cotton jackets, because they are just made, you know, for summer little cotton jackets, I pre-wash my fabric so I can throw these in the wash. It's meant to be like a kind of a smart look that you can wear in the heat kind of. Um, so it's meant to be washable, you know, it's not super fancy. You can fully line yours if you want, but I usually use facings. So that's what I have done here is I had made, have made facing patterns. Now, of course, on our front piece here, this folds over. So I need my facing to include this side of the collar. So you can actually make, you can actually make these facings in a contrasting color if you would like. So that like, if you were to look inside the jacket, it would be red here, which means that your collar will then be red against a black, blue, whatever jack, color jacket. Um, so you can actually do these as contrast to make your lapels, I think that's called a lapel, right? I'm losing my mind. <laughs> lapels a different shade than your jacket itself. And then you can do matching cuffs or things like that. It'd be super cute, matching buttons with that. But I'm just gonna be using the same fabric. So I just made a all of, little uh, all encompassing facing here, just doing my regular two and a half inches. And then I just encompassed all of this collar area and all of this like overlap button and buttonhole area, all of this angle that I included, and then a little bit of an extension down here over the princess seam. And then the way I will finish the rest of this hem, because that comes to about here, right? The rest of the hem of the jacket I will do with a um, bias tape, or a cotton bias tape, really. So there's that, and then um, up here at the neckline, I attach to a facing, just using a normal like little facing that I traced on the back here to finish the back neckline. And so that is my front facing and my back facing. Again, I just, you know, I try and keep my facings two and a half inches wide. Um, and then for this one, it's a little bit bigger and larger to encompass that entire, you know, you wanna be a little bit, it's kind of like two and a half inches past the fold over because that facing of course will show on the jacket here. Um, so you want it to still lay nice and flat. Ironing it, it will lay nice and flat. So should be fine in the end. So that is how I usually finish these and how I will be finishing this black jacket we'll be making today. So I have my pattern all ready to go. Crazy, wild. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pattern onto my nice black twill and cut this all out and then I will talk to you again. So I've cut everything out and I'm just gonna go ahead and do some marks with my handy dandy tailor, tailor's chalk here on these pieces, just because um, if you'll remember these marks here around the bust, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark those on my fabric as well so that when I'm pinning and sewing all that together, I can match these two marks up with these two marks. 
So when I pin these two pieces together, I will pin those spots first and ease any of, there's still, still a little bit of extra in this zone that is a little bit longer. Like from here to here, this curve is longer than from here to here. So I still do have to ease a little bit of this bust into this straight line of the front here. So I just wanna make sure I match up those points so that the rest of the front's princess line seam stays the way it's supposed to and that this section is where that ease gets contained. Alright, so I'm just pinning the front and front side together here. So I've just got those first mark on each piece lined up, pinned up from there. And so this piece of this bust curve is going to be pinned here, and then I will ease this in with pins and then pin the rest of it as well. I do use a lot of pins in my sewing, as we know, so um, I certainly won't be afraid to do that while I'm pinning this, but I will be doing something a little bit extra to make sure that this lays nicely and I can sew it nicely as well, and that is to, you know how we clip our curves? We clip our curves here on this channel. Um, I will be clipping this straight edge because it's meeting a curve. So this straight edge is going to start behaving like a curve or we need, we need it to. So I am actually going to put, uh, I won't clip in a half inch like I would to a finished seam because this isn't sewn yet, but I will just clip in like a tiny little quarter of an inch along this straight edge so that it will pin nicely to this curve. And I'll show you that after I have this seam fully pinned. Hopefully you can see on this black fabric, but I have just cut little tiny um, like marks every half inch or so along the straight edge, the front, this piece, the front piece of the um, princess seam. In between these lines, basically I've cut in about a quarter of an inch uh, every half inch along here to make it sit along this curve nicely here. Um, and I will actually sew it from this end down, even though my pins are on the other side for this most of this section. I will sew it with the curved side underneath, and that will just help that stay smooth and then allow me to have control over this on the top side. A lot of times I think you are recommended to do this the other way. I'm not sure. Um, but that's just, this is how I sew my princess seams. This is how I've noticed in doing these mini mock-ups, it works best for me. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna sew it with this side facing the machine and then the straight front piece on the top here. And so I can just keep control over that area while I'm sewing it on the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this other side as well. I have already pinned my princess seams of the back bodice together as well, and my facing pieces together there. So I will go ahead and sew all that together. And then I will show you, I will clip these curves for real. Um, and I'm gonna do that in a different way than I normally do. So I will show you that as well when we get over onto the ironing board after I sew the fronts, princess seams together on the front and the princess seams together on the back. So, uh, sleeve side seams and the facings together. one side of my front of my jacket here, sewn together. And along this seam, um, of course, this is where I had originally cut small notches in here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut um, cut the curve here, and also down here where it curves a little bit at the waist. I'm just gonna put little diagonal slashes up to near the seam. Of course, don't cut through your stitching, that would be very bad, um, but just cut up maybe an eighth of an inch away should be fine for this. Um, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and put little slices in there and then I will iron this seam and show you that 
um, on like a princess seam like this, because you have a straight going into a curve, one side of the seam allowance, the little cuts will open up and the other side they will overlap. Um, and something in this thick of a fabric, you won't feel or see that overlap in the finished garment. But if you are doing something thinner or something a little bit see-through maybe even, um, you would want to just actually cut out the triangles like I normally do. But for this, I am just gonna go ahead and cut diagonal lines. So I will do that and I will show you what that looks like. So here are the cuts about every half inch here. And then I just did a few down here where this curves a little bit, and then I will go ahead and press this seam all open. Of course, again, you know, who raw edges and fraying and all that stuff. I've never had any trouble with a tightly woven cotton twill like this and a thicker weight. If you're using something with a really loose weave, if you're using something maybe like a loosely woven wool or a really slippery kind of silk or something, then of course, yeah, you're gonna wanna worry about um, clipping this much and having raw seams open on the inside or something like this. And you're definitely gonna wanna line the garment. But with something like this in a cotton twill, which is basically, this is like the same as denim, almost, this fabric. It's quite thick like a denim would be. It's the same weave structure as a denim is. Um, it's cotton like a denim would be. So it's practically denim in many, many ways. So it's very thick and sturdy. Um, even when I wash this fabric, someone asked me, uh, I think it was on Instagram, what like my procedure for pre-washing fabric is and stuff like that. Like how do I protect the raw edges and stuff like that? And it's like, I don't. Um, I just toss my fabric right in the washing machine. And yes, it does fray the edge a little bit. Um, and I'm not talking about pieces like this. I'm talking about when I pre-wash my fabric and like the edge comes out looking like that. But I'm never buying so little fabric that I would need to use this edge. Like I'm always gonna be cutting at least a quarter of an inch in from my edge of my fabric. So it doesn't bother me that it comes out of the wash looking like this. So I, I don't surge my edges, my raw pieces. I don't do anything to my fabric before I just toss it in the wash. This fabric I did pre-wash and I threw it in the dryer too um, because it is 100% cotton, I believe. This might have a little, I think it's 100% cotton. Yeah, 100% organic cotton. Um, I just threw this in the washer and the dryer to maximize any shrinking beforehand, you know? Um, always pre-wash your fabrics if it's a fabric that can handle such things. Some like nice silks and wools, of course, are dry clean only and you will have to dry clean only the project as well or the piece of clothing when you're done. But something like this, if I pre-wash and pre-heat dry, which I will never do the garment, the fabric, then I can feel comfortable throwing the jacket in the wash in the future and then hanging it to dry. I know it won't shrink um, as long as I have pre-washed the fabric like that. These seams should be fine. So yes, I will leave them just raw like this. Again, here I am justifying the way I do things because I know the internet will yell at me. Somebody out there will. Um, but yes, I know that that is leaving raw edges inside my garment and I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and iron these seams now, which is just a long-winded way of saying I'm leaving these seams raw inside my jacket and I still won't be lining the jacket. Come for me. So here's what the front panel of the bodice princess seam looks like on the inside now. I just have the uh, seam pressed open here, so I have those little clips in there that I put. And you can see up here on the curve over the bust that this side, it sort of opens up a little bit and on this side it overlaps just a little bit. Again, you could go ahead and then trim those triangles if you wanted to. I know from making the other mock-up over there that if I leave it, it'll be fine. I am gonna go ahead and on these seams I just sewn, sewed, <laughs> um, on the, these are the front pieces. This is where that collar will be eventually. So on the fronts and on the back along the princess seam, I am just gonna put some top stitching along on both sides. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run that seam through the machine and just use the presser foot to measure that. So I'm just going to use, this line is where I will put that seam, also on top of the fabric. And then I'll just move my needle over a little bit to just sew next to the seam, two lines of top stitching. So I'll show you what that looks like after I've done that to all four of my princess seams. So the two seams down the fronts and the two seams down the back. So, wow. The camera is freaking out. So hopefully you can see, I've just got, wow, the camera does not like this black fabric. <laughs> I've just got the two lines of top stitching along my princess seams here. This is the back. So I have my top stitching on both of the princess seams along the back. And I did it of course on the front seams as well. So that just helps hold those seams open and flat, which is nice for the smoothness factor of this jacket. Um, it also does add a little bit of stability in there after I harped on about how, yes, I'm leaving these raw edges. Um, well, maybe I, maybe I cut that out. 
I possibly I cut out where I was trying to defend myself for leaving these raw edges inside this jacket without lining it. But you know what? It's my jacket. I'll decide if I'm going to leave raw edges in it. And I am. Um, so I have my fronts top stitched. I have my back top stitched. I can go ahead and now sew my fronts to my back of my, there's the back again. Um, sew my fronts down along the side seams. And then I will go ahead and top stitch these side seams as well. iPhone is really not liking this black hole of a project. Um, so here's where I am at right now after sewing the side seams, going ahead and doing the top stitching on that as well. And then again, same for the shoulder seams and doing the top stitching up here as well. Um, and I think it really not, it helps with this thick fabric. Having this top stitching up here, it helps it lay even like straighter and nicer here at the shoulder. I've got the facing on this one pinned underneath, but um, I didn't top stitch this one, but it really helps it stay nice and straight up here on the shoulder, even without a shoulder pad in it. Um, so I added top stitching on this black final version. Of course, I was just whipping that one together to see if this pattern worked and does. So that version, I didn't include the top stitching, but here I took my time and did the top stitching along the shoulder as well. I am going to go ahead and finish the neckline and the lapel and the top or the um, front closure of my jacket here with a facing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that facing on and then sew the facing on basically. Um, just pin it all along the front and sew it a half inch in like I would normally. I did just leave a little bit of playroom at the very end of the facing so that when I finish this edge, rest of this hem with bias tape, I can really get this nice and smooth on the inside. Um, but I just wanted to make a note about, because we clip curves here, but we also have to clip into corners so that they can be nice and smooth. So this kind of a corner here, you want to cut out a little diamond near the end. That way you can, I usually use my scissors. So that when you turn it inside out, it will stay nice and pointy and won't get all bunched up in there. So to have really nice corners, you want to cut little extra bits out of them, especially because this fabric is so thick. There's no way it'll lay nicely and press nicely without cutting out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and clip all my corners and clip my curves. I'm going to go ahead and snip out like you normally see me do along the, over the bust, I just did diagonal cuts and I didn't mind that one side of that fabric overlapped in here, as we can see on these. So one side of this, the fabric is creating little open areas and one side it is overlapping basically. Um, but for, so over the bust, I don't really mind that that's the case. But for the collar curve, because I want it to lay nicely, I am gonna go ahead and cut out little snips little triangles from this edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut, trim this with little triangles. So I'll show you what that looks like after I'm done. All right, so here is the front edge of my jacket. That's where I cut the, the bottom little notchy bit is where I cut out those little diamond shapes so that I can turn those corners. I was saying with my scissors and I realized it, I was, it sounded like I was saying, I'm gonna cut this with my scissors, which obviously I mean to say I'm going to poke the corner all the way 
out and uh, nice with my scissors, which I'll show you in a second. Um, then this is the front edge of the jacket. Um, it curves a little bit here where it goes into the collar, so I just do those diagonal cuts here. But then along the corner, or the, <laughs> the curve of the lapel, basically, of the collar turnover, I hope that I'm using the word lapel correctly. For some reason, I'm really second guessing that one today. But I just went ahead and cut out the little triangles like you normally see me do on clipping curves. And I made sure I went like every half inch because you really want that to lay smooth. And then up here, I cut a notch out of the very thick shoulder seam facing area. And then I cut clips along the back curve of the neck edge as well. And then I will cut the other side to look just the same. And then I will turn it right side out and then press everything down. I do want to know, be careful when pressing thicker fabrics like this, pressing a lot of different fabrics that you have the iron not turned up too far and you're not over pressing things. Um, a lot of times I'll use some steam and then just hold things down with my hands even, even though that's hot and I guess I'm impervious to burns at this point, but you can easily get something like get iron shine on this. Um, I really try and press from the back while I'm going, like all these seams, everything you've seen me press so far while doing this jacket, I've been pressing from the back side because I really want to avoid iron shine. It's something that really bothers me. I don't like iron shine. Um, so, uh, that's another thing I just want to note while you're doing all this pressing is to be careful. And sometimes I use more steam than I do the surface of the iron just to uh, try and avoid getting any iron shine on these thick seams on this thicker fabric. So something to avoid, something to look out for. So then once I have the facing turned to the inside of the garment, you can see I've got my little sharp corners here, the front edge where eventually there will be buttons and buttonholes on the other side, of course. Um, and then this nice smooth curve from clipping those curves. I mean, even this is still a little bit jaggedy. I could have clipped it a little bit better, but um, this is a pretty thick fabric and getting something nice and real, real smooth along the edge there does take a bit of finessing. Um, so I just have this pressed again, really trying, especially on this collar area where it will be folded on to the outside to not get any iron shine on that. Let me see if I got any down here so I can show you. You can see a tiny bit of what I mean by iron shine down here. It just gets this like little effect where it looks over ironed or a little bit burnt. And that's what I'm trying to avoid on most of the jacket here. But of course, this is inside down here and I wasn't taking as much care as I was up here on the collar that will show. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, press it all out nice and smooth like that as well. And then we will move on to doing the sleeves here for this little jacket. Here's what we are looking like from the outside as of right now, by the way. So here's my nice little collar finished with the facing. That facing will be held down, of course, by um, the nature of the shape of it, but also by the buttons being sewn through it and the button holes being sewn through it as well. So I'm now gonna go ahead and work on my sleeves here. I do just have the seam pressed open and then the bottom edge of these surged and I'm going to actually iron them quite far up and then turn this into a cuff. So I will show you how I do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and first iron this about maybe like four inches up, maybe three-ish. I, I don't really know what this is. I usually just eyeball this kind of thing. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I, I eyeball, I eyeball quite a lot of things when sewing, um, just having done it through the years. So I don't usually tend to measure what I'm doing, my little sleeve cuffs like this, but I'll show you how I got this finish on the edge here and then the inside is just surged. So I'll show you how I do that just now and I'll hem these sleeves first. Then I'm gonna put a line of stitching in the top here and a tiny bit of gathering. That's not so that the sleeves will actually be gathered. It's just so that they set into the sleeve really quite nicely and have almost a little slight roll over um, the edge here. Gosh, my camera is freaking out. Um, just a little, tiny bit of fullness in the sleeve cap, not actual gathering, but just fullness there so that it looks really nice and finished when it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these up and then I'll show you how I create the cuff out of that first. All right, so I've actually just turned my sleeve hems up about three inches on both of them all the way around. And I'm gonna sew a line of stitching about a quarter of an inch down from the um, serge edge here. I'm gonna sew that down just to keep that all in place and then I'll show you how I create the cuff out of this. Okay, so I went ahead and I sewed, I mean about a half inch down, I guess, from my little surged edge here. So that's what that looks like on the inside. And of course, when turned right side out, that looks like this. Again, you can almost see where that seam is on the inside, which is why I'm getting so cautious when I iron this. It's almost showing up better on camera than it is in person. Um, careful with iron shine when using fabrics like this. Um, <laughs> I am gonna go ahead and just turn the rest of this up 
to create a little cuff. And then what I do is I hand stitch and I come in here and I fold this down a little bit. And I hand, oh, it's so hard to see, um, hand stitch. I pick up a little bit of this curved edge and then go into this guy, picked up a little bit of the curved edge, go back in and just basically hand, invisibly hand stitch this cuff down along the inside here. And then once it's finished, it stays quite nice and it will look basically like this when it's done. This one's still pinned and not hand sewn yet either. But basically I just put a little bit of hand stitching underneath the lip of this to hold it, hold the cuff in shape. And that's how I have these sleeves all hemmed so that the inside has a surged edge like that. And then the outside has this cuff appearance. Gosh, filming with black fabric. <laughs> I'm learning it's such a task. So what I have done to my sleeves here, I have just gone ahead and done that hand sewing so that this is hemmed down. That cuff is all finished now. Um, you can't even see the big stitches because they kind of blend into the serging there. But I've just sewn a line of stitches, stitching using my largest stitch length on my machine about a quarter inch in and I'm just using that to gather the top of my sleeve caps just a little. So I just wanted to show you I'm really just gathering it a tiny bit because I want to set it in smooth but in order to do so I'm just curving that top edge of the sleeve cap a tiny bit so that when I sew it in it looks kind of like this which is the finished one over here and this one even needs to be steamed still but it just has a tiny bit of gathering in there so that the sleeve cap sits really nicely into this you know thicker fabric jacket here so when i'm done it will look like this of course this one has again needs to be steamed um but i will go ahead and sew these black sleeves into my black version of this jacket now so i have my sleeve all pinned into its little armhole here right sides together i'm just going to go ahead and sew that into place and then sew the other one as well and then i will work on the hem of this jacket buttonholes on this navy blue mock-up version of the jacket um, and they look fine uh, they're a little bit frilly um, but I just this fabric is I mean this navy is so dark I can't even imagine what's gonna be like on the black um, the fabric is so dark and when I use matching thread I just really can't see what I'm doing and I'm just kind of getting frustrated with this I don't know I've done it before dozens of times but this time I just don't think I'm in the right headspace to do hand-sewn buttonholes so I wanted to give it a try on a scrap piece of fabric and see what machine buttonholes look like so these are my machined buttonholes. Unfortunately, my buttonhole foot doesn't go as long as I originally was gonna make these, but these are the buttons I'm using and they do fit okay. They're the, basically the longest buttonhole my um, machine can make, which I can't show you with my left hand, obviously. Ooh, I promise it slips through there. Um, so, which does still fit my buttons, so. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just use my machine to do the buttonholes on my black jacket. They just are coming out nicer than my hand done ones. I just can't see, like I want to make the stitches right next to each other when I'm doing them by hand, but I just can't really see what the heck is going on with the black thread and the black fabric once it starts to fray and ooh, it just, it's just frustrating to me, me today. I think I'm in the, the wrong point of the month to try and do something so frustrating basically. So I'm going to go ahead and this is just a scrap piece of fabric here with two layers of fabric like the jacket is. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my buttonholes. I'm gonna come in three quarters of an inch, mark them just like I did on the uh, mock-up version. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and sew those with my machine and then cut them open with a little tiny pair of scissors. This is actually, um, you know, you can pick up these little tiny sewing scissors anywhere, but I actually got these while I was taking a class at Hampton Court Palace with the Royal School of Needlework, which was probably one of the coolest days um, I spent when I was studying abroad in England in 2012, way back when, um, when I was studying in the UK for 
a semester during university, I took a class with Royal School of Needlework, and I wanted to buy a little memento of the day to remember that by, so I actually bought these at Hampton Court Palace, which I will always know that's where these little ones came from. So that is an item in my collection of stuff that actually does have a story with it. Look at that. Amazing. So my buttonholes are here, are in here on my front of my jacket now. Of course, buttonholes go on the right hand side of the garment for women's wear. At least I had to look it up. I, I never can remember, <laughs> but apparently that is the deal. Um, so I have my buttonholes here. They're again, three quarters of an inch in, and then they're about an inch and a quarter long, I think. I don't have my buttons sitting here, but I'm sure they will fit. Um, and then I will go ahead and lay, well, I guess I should hem this. I said earlier I was going to hem this next and then I did the buttonholes. So I will go ahead and hem this next and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. All right, in a shocking turn of events, I am going to be using bias tape to hem this. So I'm just leaving a little bit of extra just like I did here so I can turn all that inside later and hand sew it all pretty down. But I am just going to use some cotton double fold bias tape in black, of course, to match. I'm pinning this right sides together along the outside bottom edge of the jacket here. I will go all along this back curved edge here all the way to the other side. This is again the other side front here where the facing is and I will do that same go up to where I have that facing hanging off and I will just go ahead and machine stitch along a half inch in and then I will turn this into the inside just like I um, hemmed my circle skirt in my last video. The same kind of idea. Anytime I have a curved edge I tend to use a bias tape to hem it just because I find that easiest. So I'm going to go ahead and keep pinning this along the back bottom edge of my jacket and then I will sew it, turn it inside and show you what that looks like. Side of the jacket now you can see the end of that facing here I just have that facing come down and then where I have sewn my nose is being <laughs> my voice is being very nasally so I sewed the bias tape along this bottom hem edge I've turned that inside and ironed it going up of course this is a nice folded finished edge of the bias tape here and I will just hand stitch along this bias tape just taking tiny little pricks on the outside and then holding that bias all down on the inside and then here where it meets the facing at the, this is the front where the buttons are, um, I just have folded that facing down smooth and then folded the bias tape so it's a nice little finished edge there. If I wanted to be really particular about it, I could make it like match that edge, but I don't really care what the inside of my garments look like as long as it's finished enough. It's only going to be me who knows, well and you now I suppose, um, what the inside looks like as versus the outside. So this black hole of a thing here is actually the finished jacket with the buttons sewn on and all the facing tacked down on the inside, the hem all done, everything finished on the jacket. But now of course it wouldn't be a suit if I didn't have a matching skirt. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make, ooh sorry about the shaky cam. So I'm just going to take the rest of my twill here and make a pencil skirt using my standard pencil skirt block 
pattern, my standard pencil skirt pattern that I use all the time. I am not going to show you how to draft a pencil skirt pattern today just because that's rather involved and we already have a lot going on in this video with the jacket. Um, so I'm not going to show you the skirt pattern today. I will be doing a video in the future on how to draft a um, pencil skirt pattern from your measurements or from measurements in a like chart. Um, I'm just not going to be doing that today. So, you know, if you were to be following along, say, which I mean, do tell me if you do, because <laughs> I would be surprised. Um, you know, you just find a pencil skirt pattern you like and then make it. <laughs> um, I'm just going to be doing a single layer skirt out of this same twill with a little waistband and probably a slit in the center back so I can walk. Um, I'm not going to do like a kick pleat or anything. In the back, I don't think I'm just going to do a slit because I'm not in the layer. I mean, maybe I'll do a kick pleat. <sighs> should I? No, I want to do a slit. Or should I do a pleat? I can't decide, so we'll see what happens. I'm probably going to show you me making the skirt, but not talk about it very much. Um, even this isn't very interesting, in fact. I'll be talking to you like this while I'm talking to you, as opposed to just showing you black twill in a blown out. Not very even very pretty frame or video. Um, the iPhone camera sometimes can't decide if it likes me or not. Man, this sewing room is a mess, huh? Oh well, we will have a, maybe we'll have a cleaning day or I will at least. But I'm gonna go ahead and make a pencil skirt out of this twill. We'll see how long that takes me. I do also kind of hope I could maybe eke out an A-line skirt out of this fabric too. I don't know how much I have here, probably not enough to do that. Um, I'm definitely gonna make a pencil skirt and then whatever's left over, I may make a vest using this same pattern and just change the armhole a little bit um, or uh, an A-line skirt. So I'm definitely gonna make a pencil skirt and we'll see how much fabric I have left over if I wanna make anything else to go match this jacket, match this sort of set. Of course, I can buy more of this fabric. This is a fabric that Mood has in stock all the time and it's just black, so the dye lots shouldn't matter too badly. If I wanted to make some more things out of this fabric in the future, I could add to this set quite easily, I think. But I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and start making this pencil skirt, basically.
here is the finished little cotton twill suit. One of many now that I have in my closet. Of course, I did have all these made before I changed my block pattern around to fit me better. So now this one I think is the best fit out of any of my little cotton twill suits like this now. So uh, I will probably be finishing that navy blue one that I made as a mock-up for sure. And then probably using this pattern in the future if I ever want to make another little suit like this because my other ones actually do not fit nearly as well as this one does. I'm really happy with how the fit came out on this garment. I'm really happy with how the project came together in general, other than it taking much, much longer than I had hoped it had, or ho hoped it would, but that's neither here nor there. I was having a little bit of difficulties, a lot of self-doubt with this project, which just goes to show, um, just goes to show that even after years and years of sewing, uh, you still, you know, will doubt yourself and doubt where you are along the way. But luckily with making a couple of mock-ups, I persevered through and was able to finish the project, even if not on time. I do really like these little suits for this transitional period between summer and fall here. They're good because they have that structured uh, look of a suit and have a, like a very crisp, you know, September feel about them. And yet they are still very cool for the summer heat that is still with us, unfortunately, as we finally roll into pumpkin season. And as you can see, I have already decorated behind me. It all started with this little cat I found at Target. And then I was like, well, I can't just put the cat in the background now, can I? So I put some pumpkins out as well. Um, do forgive the wig also. Uh, speaking of Halloween things, I just didn't feel like doing my hair here. It is actually quite late at night now after having finally finished this project. Hem the pencil skirt basically with my last task there. Um, so I didn't want to have to go upstairs and do my hair after all that. So I just tossed on this wig. I hope you can forgive me um, for looking a little different than usual. But of course it does create kind of a goth secretary look, which isn't such a bad thing. Do feel free to ask me any questions you may have if I left anything out of the pattern drafting or the sewing of this garment. I do, as always, fear that I have missed something vital in my trying to remember how to film while sewing things, uh, shenanigans with these sorts of projects. So I may have missed something, and if so, please do feel free to ask me in the comments below and I will answer to the best of my ability, of course, and or point you towards a better resource if I know of one. Of course, I'm not. I'm an expert in some things, but not in all things. So I will try and point you towards experts if needed. And thus with this project, my summer sewing series for 2019 is complete. And of course, I'm not going to stop sewing and I'm not going to stop sewing here on the channel, but uh, we have to start planning fall and winter projects here instead. So do leave me some suggestions in the comments below of things you would like to see me make here on the channel for fall and winter. And I'll go through some of them and see if they line up with some of my own plans. And hopefully we can come to a sort of agreement on what the next few projects may be here on the channel as we move into a new season. And thank you as always for tuning in today. I'll see you again soon. Bye.